So I'm here with Martin Raymond, um, Strategy and Insight Director and the founder of the Future Laboratory, yes. who's given us an extremely interesting trend briefing today. And uh, I'm going to try to get us to summarize it all because there was so much information that you want to portray. But the three themes, first of all, the decade of change, but you had the teen, the turbulent teenager. Turbulent teen, teen. so it's turbulent not teens. teenager, no? it's about how I think increasingly we as consumers and as you know retailers and businesses and brands are behaving like teenagers mainly because of the market's changing mm. lots of new things to explore lots of ideas to grasp uh, lots of things that we can't control so really our mood swings are equivalent to how a teenager reacts to the world one day you're feeling optimistic, the next day you're depressed, mm. the next day you're, you're thinking curious. Oh, curious. So it's really capturing that and making, I think, the, the, the clients we do deal with understand that this is how the world will be for the next decade. It's not something that's just happened post the recession mm. or the recent kind of, you know, uh, problems caused by, by uh, vol volcanic ash falling from, from Iceland. I think it is going to be ongoing. Mm. So the business strategy for tomorrow must embrace that as a standard, not something that would be unusual, and then business will get back to where it was before. It's a bit as the expression that you've given that think the unthinkable and plan for the unimaginable. I, I think, you know, we, we tend to talk about this mm. in theory, that of course we do this as businesses, but look what happened. We actually couldn't move people around Europe exactly. simply because of volcanic fallout. Mm. If there was a war, if there was a major catastrophe, which it wasn't, it was a minor, minor, minor eruption mm. in a small place mm. at the furthest parts of Europe. Mm. So really it should have no effect whatsoever, but look it how it affected impact. us. We weren't ready, mm. we weren't prepared, but best and worst still, we didn't use our imagination to challenge mm. or to rethink how we got people around from A to B. And I think increasingly these problems will become normal. And the problem you have with most businesses is they are trained not to be imaginative, they are trained not to think, and they are trained not to come up with solutions that are really kind of counterintuitive of left to field. So how are we going to change that trend? I think we need to change it in terms of how people think. Mm. I think we need to change it in terms of how we teach business. Mm. I think we need to change it in terms of how we allow people within our businesses to make decisions, to collaborate, to be creative without having to check it with head office. Mm. Because as soon as you introduce those layers of checking, benchmarking, which is what we've had, uh, that is where somebody else who is leaner and more flexible comes in and changes the market mm. just when you think you're at last ready to try what is now, gosh, look, it's moved on. And it feels like we're coming into the subject of another of your topics, better betapreneurs? Be betapreneurs. I mean, the ones who risk the Yeah, if you think the about the, the, the kind of the way we uh, set out the topics, we had turbulence, mm -hmm. which is the big picture. Mm -hmm. Then we had a look at what we called leanomics, mm -hmm. which is how you become more efficient and manage that turbulence. Mm -hmm. And then betapreneurialism is really how we look at all of these things happening. And we go, okay, we have to be leaner and fitter. Mm -hmm. And there's lots of, of kind of risk. How do we become those kind of people who can manage that mm. and thrive on it and engage on it? So betapreneurs, i.e. test it quickly, don't really think about it. Entrepreneur, the idea that you put risk, you risk your money and your finances to try this idea. So we put the words together mm. because I think increasingly, again, if you're under 25, you think, well, that's how business is. If you're over 50, you think, you know, actually, I need everything to be mm. really planned one out. One is and more if, flexible, yeah, one is and more if stale. You're in, like me in the middle, you kind of think, I can see both ways of doing it. Mm. So really, the, the briefing was tr try to bring everybody to the point whereby you can take the bits you need, use the bits you want, and if you discard other bits, at least you know mm. what the consequences of that are. And it also th uh, feels like the theme is a lot going from the globalization of the world to more geolocation of actually being more local. Geolocation, look, being more local, but also, I think, being more responsive to the local mm. needs of the customers. So, you know, we had, for example, people today from, from you know, H&M, uh, IKEA, uh, big Swedish companies. What I like about them as businesses is that they're, re they're quite agile and quite nimble. Mm. And increasingly, they are actually thinking local, behaving local, and developing a local footprint. So, you know, the, the H&M store, I'm betting in 10 years' time, will be so different in every city. Mm. You know, IKEA will start producing 
furniture and modules and, and room concepts that are very particular to France, mm. to Germany, to Italy. It's just that fortunately at the moment you live in a culture that produces lots of things people want. Mm. But at some point we will just want our own things, exactly. but you still need to run a business. And I think that also comes to the fact you, you were talking a lot about us being overloaded. There's so much information and we want to go from sort of that globalization overloaded to more pure, simple. Yes. The stuffocation is going to be replaced by... So I think just it's a, a period of where you've had excess, mm. where you've had, you know, we talk about bling and we talk mm. about that, the kind of the party decade. And I think now people just go, at the Time end of a reflect. party, you have a hangover. <laughs> so you we're in the hangover stage. Recover. We're just okay. coming out of the hangover. Recession was the hangover. Yeah. Now we're thinking, you know what? The next day you always wake up, you think, mm. I'm going to have good food. I'm going to drink lots of water. Mm. I'm going to have good walks. I'm going to feel healthy. And I think we're now in that cultural shift whereby we recognize these things mm. are essential. Otherwise, you're, you're not nurturing your spirit in the way that you have been nurturing your body and I think now it's about a spiritual thing and exactly. increasingly more people will, will probably go that route. So it's more a movement of consciousness? Consciousness and I think also a movement to be conscious of what your activities can do to the planet if you don't think about them. Before we thought everything was, was, was you know uh, going to last forever mm. then uh, we were reminded that maybe it's not going to last forever the boomer kind of knows now their time is up and we increasingly think, you know what, we won't have 40 years left to enjoy this. Perhaps we only have 10 years left mm -hmm. before the law and the government will stop us from doing the things we now take for granted. And if you would give us, I mean, the coming decade, what are sort of the top trends that, that pros and cons that we can look forward to or that we should get prepared for? I think increased localization. We mm -hmm. live in a global world. Perversely, we'll see things becoming more mm. and more local. Um, supply change, as opposed to supply chain, we will increasingly see the things we buy mm. being located closer to where, where we, we make them and where we are. So get ready too for having urban farms, you know, farms, allotments, gardens for growing, what I call the living garden, mm. or the, 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 the uh, nutritional garden, a garden I can eat rather than a garden I can lie in. Mm. Uh, products and household products that are more sustainable, but also more nimble and actually more intelligent. Because I think increasingly, we forget that when we leave the room, the room still lives. Mm. The light is still left on, the heater is still working, energy is still being consumed. I think our houses will become much more aware of our absence as well as our presence. So it will start shutting off and switching down. And I think also the other big trend to think about is this process of how the, the divisions between you know, the, the buyer, the wholesaler, the customer, the brand will absolutely collapse. With my laptop, mm. I can be a buyer, a seller, a manufacturer, a creator. Mm. And I think increasingly that will become the pattern. So in 10 years time, the home will be a hub where we produce, we create, we work, and also a place we will enjoy, but active enjoyment. Mm. I think increasingly we need to understand that leisure is no longer horizontal. It's no longer it just musts. Exactly, mm. it is vertical mm. and it is engaging. So the future is bright. The future is bright, but also the future is imaginative. We're Imagine. at a decade where it's up to us to rewrite the rules of how we engage with the world. The 20th century created the rules that mm. have given us some beautiful benefits, but also some terrible problems. Now we are rewriting the century and rewriting the rules to reconfigure the planet in a way that suits us.